three massive points in Orlando, Florida today as the orange and blue come away victorious in their second match of the MLS is back tournament. Good morning. Welcome inside of our Cincinnati Bell broadcast booth. I am Tom Glader. Thrilled to be alongside my broadcast partner, Kim McCloskey, as we are with you here. Match number two now in the books. A little bit early for a pregame today, so we decided to go postgame, and that decision has paid off, Kevin. A big effort from the orange and blue today. A wild match to talk about, so we have lots to talk about here over the next half hour or so. We'll have the press conference, and how about the birthday gift for Yop Stam? Tomorrow he celebrates his birthday. Today he celebrates his first win as the head coach of FC Cincinnati. Well, I think, you know, obviously it's been a, a short three weeks uh, as far as time, but there's been a lot that's went into that for him. Um, obviously, in hurting these, this team, having a chance really to, to dig in and see what he has. Uh, straight in at the deep end, we talked about that last week's game as well. Uh, again, some tough competition. The Atlanta game was another tough opponent today, but coming away with a victory. Right? Yeah. And, and that's a, a huge confidence booster, not just for Yap, but for this squad. Seems like there was a different twist or turn every five to ten minutes throughout this match, really. But the first 15 to 20 minutes, and you and I, we talked late last night, we talked again this morning, we were intrigued to see what Yap would do. A couple weeks ago, we were lucky enough to go to training. We watched from afar, but up from the deck, and we noticed in that game they were preparing for Atlanta. They didn't even have the schedule at that point. They didn't know which right. game was first, but they know what Atlanta plays, a 3-4-3, and that day they ran a 3-5-2. That's what FC Cincinnati came out in, but there was no pressure. They sat back and kind of let the game come to them very early. I think, look, there, there's two things that you've got to look at, right? FC Cincinnati right now have been challenged with not scoring enough goals right. and then defensively giving up goals, right? And I think you've got to play your way into the game. And I think that was part of, you know, the, the tactical setup. It was certainly part of the strategy, yeah. setting back, allowing the game to come to them and try to build and grow in confidence as the game went on. And, you know, again, it, it worked out well, getting three points on the board. Yeah, absolutely. So FC Cincinnati, a win in their second match in Orlando. And guess what that means? Life for the orange and blue. Now all of a sudden you play New York and a win against New York next week. And we'll talk about that later on in the show. But a win means you're moving on. You'll be in the top two if you get a win against Red Bulls next Wednesday. So in Atlanta, for all intents and purposes, now I get there's some situations that are way smarter than me to figure out. They're not out yet. No. But boy, are they in a bad way. No, they're, I mean, again, two defeats uh, in a row for, for De Boer yeah. and, and his squad. Um, I thought it was a bit of a, a lackluster performance for them. Obviously, getting a man sent off yeah. so early in the game changes what he has. But, you know, I don't think Atlanta really answered the question of how to replace Joseph Martinez. You know, he's been out and they, they've tried some different players in different positions and roles, but it's not the same Atlanta team from last year. Yeah, we talked about that last night on the radio show when we had Kevin Egan on, who does the television broadcast for Atlanta United and he said sure this is the same story we talked about four months ago when you and I were in Atlanta it's a team trying to figure out their identity without Joseph Martinez so let's look at some of the key moments throughout the match and you talked about the man being sent off and certainly that was the case here's the second yellow card it comes in the 26 minute and you can't play like that if you know you're already playing on a yellow card no I think listen it's a bit of a clumsy challenge uh, I think right here there's body position Joe Jow gets in front uh, and from there, it's an obvious takedown, you know. And, and moments before that, there was another foul, if you remember, uh, on the plan as well. It was fairly reckless, which led in the yellow card. Mm -hmm. At the time, was it a question, was it a red card? Well, you know, both of those yellow cards, obviously, then... Yeah, Mulaney meant to be... Or sim it, he deserved to be sent off in uh, the end. Absolutely. It, it provided kind of if the referee had made that, you know, miss or, or mistake. And, and FC Cincinnati find themselves in a, a fortuitous position, being a man up. So you're a man up for now two-thirds of the match, mm -hmm. which is a huge advantage for the orange and blue. But there were some tense moments towards the end of the half. And Shemeshav Titan, TT, had to come up big with a save late in the half to keep it nil-nil. I, th I think he had about two or three saves just towards the end of the first half, and he came up big. Uh, TT, I think, overall had a solid game today. Uh, obviously, getting a clean sheet for a goalkeeper is huge in confidence. A couple of kind of misjudged times where he's coming out for crosses and things like that. But with shot stopping, I, I thought he was, uh, you know, pretty positive and, and confident uh, as he came out. And again, with the defense and that being a challenge from the last game in Columbus and giving up goals, this is a big step, not just for the goalkeeper, but for the back line as well. Yeah, clean sheet for FC Cincinnati. That is certainly positive. It looked like that clean sheet might be erased right 
before the half. A penalty was awarded to Atlanta. It went to VAR, and you will see the definitive shot here as the back foot. I believe it was Barco just having his foot back. I remember the game against Philadelphia last year, remember? Yeah. Philly was on side, the Union, because Elvis Powell had his foot back in a very similar situation. And I credit the folks in the VAR booth. They caught it and overturned that penalty right before the teams went in. Well, it's definitely a game of inches, right? And, and sometimes those decisions can go against you or for you. I, I think for FC Cincinnati, it certainly went for them, um, which again was a, a turning uh, chance and moment in this game. Um, the challenge itself from Michael was a little clumsy. You know, there, I don't think there was a need to maybe make that challenge. Uh, but nonetheless, VAR got it right. Uh, and the penalty was declined, didn't happen, and FC Cincinnati go on and, and get three points. Well, there were a couple chances for the orange and blue in the first 30 minutes of the second half. Kubo had a chance, uh, Kendall Waston had a chance, just missed out on, and then it's the kid. The guy we had on the radio show last night, how about that? Frankie Amaya with a brilliant first professional goal. Well, listen, it's a great moment for him in his career, and we talked about it a lot last year. Some of these moments in these similar positions as well, where maybe he was a little hesitant to pull the trigger. Maybe he didn't get enough on the shot. But right now, he sees Guzan. If you see Guzan as well, he's not in a great position, close to his six-yard box, picks his head up, hits it well, a little bit of dip, a little bit of curve on it too, and ends up going in the back of the net. Great moment for Frankie. Yeah, there's no question about that. And super happy for Frankie Amaya last year, a couple of times so close to yep. getting that first goal, the first assist. He finished his first professional season without either. I think he was a little frustrated by that because he saw good playing time in 2019. Now he comes out his fourth match of the season and he buries his first professional goal. Time for our Legion fly around the league. Some of the storylines. How about that game last night? San Jose and Vancouver. We were texting during that back and forth, some wild goals, and then San Jose at the death gets the game winner. Yeah, I mean, great goals, great you know entertainment, I guess, for the fans as well. A lot of, I would say, defensive mistakes. Uh, we talked about that too. But again, it, it adds a little bit more excitement uh, to this recipe, which is this MLS is back tournament. And I think for the fan, I think it's a good thing to see. Well, there was great news yesterday as far as the league was concerned of the players that are still in the bubble and competing. So ignoring Nashville and Dallas, which had one positive test between those two teams, the rest of the bubble, the rest of the players, personnel, staff, everybody involved, there were zero positive COVID tests yesterday. So that is certainly a great sign and a, a great job by everybody following the protocols down there to make sure that everybody is safe. Two big games tonight. You got a rivalry match at 8 o'clock. Montreal and Toronto will play at 8. And then the other Group E game comes your way at 10.30. Columbus and Red Bulls New York. And I'm sure all FC Cincinnati fans will clearly have their eyes on that one because, of course, that result will set up what we see next week when FC Cincinnati takes on New York. So lots of exciting things going on at the MLS is back tournament, including the win today. FC Cincinnati 1-0 knocks off Atlanta United. First time they've ever beaten Atlanta. We'll step aside to take a break here inside our Cincinnati Bell broadcast booth. Much more to come, including the post-match press conference. We'll get live reaction from Orlando. We'll hear from Yop Stama. Something tells me Frankie Amaya will be involved in that press conference as well. And more analysis from this morning's win. The earliest match in FC Cincinnati history falls in favor of the orange and blue. Stay tuned for more. Every year, millions fly with us at Allegiant because together, we go places. We see old friends and try new things. We laugh. We really like to laugh and reconnect. We remember and we wander, which leads to wonder. From how we go to where we go to what we do when we get there, we go further together. Skyline Morning, everyone. Is your Don't get started with home. this morning's uh, post-match press conference. Place where you feel with your family and friends. Know that we're taking extra precautions to help our guests and employees stay well as we welcome you back into our dining rooms. Whether you choose drive-through, carry-out, or dine-in service, we'll serve up your favorite conies and ways and make you feel right at home. 
That's what Skyline Time is all about. getting back out on the road and your Toyota dealers say welcome back America now you can get the exciting new built in a USA Camry with a thousand dollars customer cash or lease one for two nineteen dollars a month get a stylishly affordable Corolla with fifteen hundred dollars customer cash or lease this one for just one sixty nine dollars a month and every new Toyota comes with a two year no cost maintenance plan welcome back America be safe out there today tomorrow Toyota Normal. We changed a couple of things in our setup today, um, playing again, uh, again uh, against one of the strongest teams in the league, Atlanta. Columbus is that as well. I think we've got one of the toughest groups. Uh, you might say that, um, but you know we uh, we managed to do very well. Um, our setup was a little bit more defensively. We gave them time on the ball, so it looks like they had a lot of possession but couldn't create uh, a lot of opportunities. We were very calm, disciplined in what we needed to do, and waiting for the moments to come out on the break at times. But even in, in possession at times, you know, we, we made it difficult for them and they needed to make choices and that's what we aimed at and we succeeded in doing that. Um, eventually when we came out a couple of times, you know, they made a couple of fouls, had a, uh, got a red card, which I think is, uh, was a good decision by the referee, could have given a couple more I think, but um, it doesn't happen unfortunately. Um, I, I still think after when we played against 10, um, you know, we were, we were very composed, uh, eventually created a couple of very good opportunities. And uh, could have scored uh, before already. Um, you know, when we scored after the 1-0, that the opposition is going to press a little bit more. Um, it's normal that we wanted to, to defend that one goal, uh, of course, to uh, to get the three points. Uh, they've done that. They've done that great. Um, you know, the players have been working very hard. Um, I think they've been looking for this little success, and I'm saying little. Uh, if you look at the game, it's a big success, but it's it's a small thing. In, our step going uh, going forward. We needed this as well because the players deserved it. The last couple of weeks they've been working very hard, you know, to to get where we are now, and and we need to make uh, we still need to make a lot of steps, and, and we're aware of it. But this is a, this is a good win, and uh, I think if you look at the overall picture, you know, yeah, you can also say okay, maybe they deserved it as well. We'll now open things up for questions. Uh, we'll start with Pat Brennan from the Cincinnati Inquirer. Pat, go ahead. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Yap, congratulations on your first win as uh, FC Cincinnati manager. Um, the game obviously started out, as you said, with a, a defensive setup, uh, a little more passive. Um, how did the red card to Jake Mulraney in the 26th minute change your approach uh, tactically? And uh, did you like how the team closed out the first half and maybe started the second half with the man advantage? Well, I, th I think I already liked it when we were playing 11 v 11 because then you could see that Atlanta had difficulties as well. So it's not only when we played against 10, also when we played 11 v 11. You know, we, we came out, uh, you know, we give them the ball a bit more passive. Um, I think everybody, and I'm going to say it to you as well and to everybody again, we need to be realistic in where we are as a team. Uh, so if you play against one of the best teams in the league, you can't, you cannot think, okay, that we need to press high and we need to have a lot more possession, or we need to create at least ten chances. That's never going to happen in, uh, in in soccer. So in our, our setup, I think um, we did it very well. And eventually, when you play against ten men, yeah, then then you can keep the ball a little bit longer because they're going to be dropping in. They don't want to give away spaces to, uh, to uh, for us to run in or to play these balls through. Uh, and, and we did that very well, and, and, and we created opportunities. Um, the understanding and that everybody needs to know as well that the heat over here, it's, uh, it's not normal, uh, I think, to play games in, but we, we, we need to do it, and uh, the humidity is enormous, so that's why we've got two breaks every, uh, every 45 minutes as well. So the players uh, in overall did a very good job. Next, we'll go to Tom Bogert with MLSsoccer.com. Hey. Uh, congrats on the win. Um, I just wanted to see, you know, be, with the red card, it, it kind of makes the, the game state a little different than normal. But, uh, you know, what specific positives can you take away from the performance and, and that can kind of project towards the future? And is this formation, I guess, something that, you know, we'll be seeing regularly from you? Well, we, we, uh, I already said in the beginning when I, when I did like um, interviews with, with, with the press with you guys that I like my team to, to play two systems in a 4-3-3 and in a 5-3-2 or a 5-2-3. You know, and, and today we did it a little bit different in the setup because I think it's good for players that you can switch and you don't always need to focus on one thing because then you can make it difficult for the opposition. And that's what happened today. And, um, you know, and even if we played 11 v 11, um, you know, uh, it would have been a little bit, uh, a little bit different. But we still had an opportunity, uh, I think, to to win even then. 
but you never know how it goes because it's only uh, you need to talk afterwards. But um, the game uh, went uh, how it how it went, and, and we did it very well. You know, in uh, in our setup, in our uh, run with Joe going forward, they needed to make a foul on him, the, the defender's second yellow card. Yeah, that's because they did it well, that we did it well, and we uh, we made use of uh, of that, and eventually, yeah. You get cards, and uh, and when you make a lot of fouls, and uh, that's what happened today, you know. And then you need to play against uh, ten men, which uh, a lot of people think that it's easier as well to play against ten. But you know, if you play against ten, the opposition is dropping in more and more. So you need to be patient, and uh, I think the team has done it very well. Next, we'll go to Laurel Failer with WCPO.com. Uh, Frankie scoring his first career goal, uh, being a young player, what, what can that do for him to, to be able to get a goal like that early in the season, or I guess early in what hopes to be a season, um, and talk a little bit about what you saw from that. Well, I think Frankie, and, and I've already said it uh, after the first game, he, he was after the first game he was already one of the best players on the pitch for us. And, uh, and today he was very uh, decisive for us as well in scoring his first, game, uh, his first goal. He's got the ability to improve a lot more. He's already doing well. Um, the opposition is, uh, is, and other teams are talking about him as well. We know that, um, you know. But he's an interesting player, and, and he's got a lot of quality. He's a young guy, you know. He can, uh, he hasn't. Not only, you know, he showed in the dressing room after as well that he can, he's got other moves as well. No, but he's, uh, <laughs> it's just a joke. But it's, uh, you know, he, he's, he's good. And tactically, he's strong. He needs to take up his positions to get on the ball and going forward. Uh, quality on the ball, that's what he shows. So he needs to keep it up. He's, he's, he's you know, like he's, he's saying yourself, he's a young player and he's just starting. But he's already, uh, he's already at a certain level that we can think, okay, you know, he's, uh, he's doing very well. Next, we'll go to Charlie Hatch with FCCincinnati.com. Yes, Jakob, I'm curious for you. Obviously, it sounds like you guys executed the game plan you wanted. How proud are you of your players for being able to get this result after how the match went this past weekend? Sorry, can Any you response? repeat that again after? Yes. Uh, after how the match went on Saturday, how pleased are you and proud of your players? Are you for this response that they were able to achieve in this match? Well, the response is very good. And, and, and we're always looking forward because the questions after the first match is always like, OK, how can you keep the guys head up and get the confidence high? And um, and when we spoke about it, you know, we're in this process of building something to build in a team. And, and, and by building a team, sometimes you're losing games. So after three weeks pre-season, um, and, and you have to play well, and you need to play your first game against a very good team. It doesn't, uh, well, it's, it's not like um, okay, we're going to be winning this game straight away. You know that you're facing certain uh, certain things, certain players, certain teams who have who've got a lot of quality, and, and Columbus was uh, was one of that. Uh, we started the game over there as well, very well. We created also in the first 20, 25 minutes against. Uh, Columbus, very good, very good opportunities to, to to score ourselves, which we didn't do. And if you do that, then the game is like totally different. But eventually, uh, you know, after that loss, um, everybody knew what to do, and everybody was very eager to work very hard again uh, today to get that result. And uh, sometimes you need to look at it from from game to game, and how your game plan is, and, and how your setup is as a team as well, to make a difference. And that's what they've done today, and they they fully deserved it. Next, we'll go to Rob Pierce with Cincinnati Soccer Talk. Uh, hi, uh, I'm just wondering uh, what effect, if any, uh, the early start time had for you. Yeah, it's um, yeah, we were uh, we, we were quite uh, quite afraid how it's how it's gonna uh, end up and, and work out because it's uh, playing nine in the morning. Uh, like again, in this heat is uh, is well, I've I've never played it, and I don't I don't think you're gonna see it uh, ever again everywhere in the world playing nine in the morning. So it's difficult difficult situations. We've been training um, a little bit earlier as well. The last couple of days, so hopefully the players got used to it. You know, today they woke up very, very fresh, very good, and, uh, and they have showed that on the on the pitch. So you need to prepare for that, but uh, it's not ideal in in playing games. We have time for two more. We'll go to Charlie Goldsmith with the Cincinnati Inquirer. Can you describe more what you saw from Frankie's goal and what your reaction to it was? Can you speak a bit louder, please? I can't hear you. Can you describe what you saw from Frankie's goal and what your reaction to it was? Well, of course, I was very happy. Which uh, every goal that we're going to be scoring, I'm, I'm going to be happy. And then uh, Frankie, you know, he got into a certain position that he could like to the to the top of the box, and he could uh, have a shot. And then we said as well, uh, if you have the opportunity, you've got the freedom, then you need to take a shot at goal. And, and you know, he uh, 
planted that ball in uh, almost the top corner. Goal, uh, the goalie was surprised, and um, I think you, you've seen it. Um, well, my reaction, but also the others in uh, on the bench as well. I think everybody was very happy with that with that goal. And for the final question, we'll go to uh, Franco Panizzo. Franco, go ahead. Hey, thank you. Hey, Jeff. Uh, obviously, Frankie scores a, a wonderful goal for you guys, but. What do you guys have to do to, to create more quality chances, more looks on goal? Obviously, today you guys had a man advantage and maybe didn't get as many clear-cut looks as, as maybe some people would have thought. But going forward, what do you guys have to do to create more chances um, from the run of play? Well, if, if, we, if we create one and we score one and we don't con concede opportunities, we still run a win with 1-0. So that's, that's enough for me, to be honest. But, uh, and that will conclude. But, 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 Sorry. Uh, do I need to start? Do I need to finish it? or? No, that, that's all. Uh, okay. We'll conclude okay. the first half of this uh, press conference. Yaf, thank you for taking your time. Okay, thank you. All right, a very happy Yaf Stam in Orlando, and for good reason, Kevin. He talked about a lot of the positives from this match, and there were certainly a lot. Obviously, that goal by Frankie Amayo. We'll talk more about that as, as we go along. But uh, you heard Yaf, and he said, look, I was happy when it was 11 v 11. I thought we were playing well. Yeah. I think, look, uh, again, you know, he talked about it. Give the circumstances, right? Where this team is, where this roster is as far as the building process and the opponent that you're playing against, right? And you just can't go out there and, and play this fluid game, press high, expect to create more chances the, than the opponent. It's not going to happen right? because of the quality of the players compared to what FC Cincinnati have at this time. You add in the factor as well of injuries of key players for FC Cincinnati, and you have to create a strategy with that. And that's what we saw. You know, so it was a lot more defensive. It was a little bit more passive. But there were still some chances they came from it. And the most important thing, they kept a clean sheet. Yeah, yeah, no question. Well, Ken Waston is uh, approaching the podium. So let's go back to Orlando in the post-match press conference. Uh, and it looks like Frankie Amaya Frank is there as well. For his first MLS goal in today's match, as well as defender and captain Ken Waston. Uh, just as a reminder for media, if you can use the raise hand function to signal that you like to ask a question, uh, we'll get things started here with Frankie and Kendall. Frankie, if you could just provide some thoughts on being able to score your, your first goal, and Kendall, uh, just some overall thoughts on the performance from the team today. So Frankie, I'll let you kick it off. Yeah, I mean, it was my, it was my first goal in like 27 games. Uh, I was getting a little patient, but I got my first goal, and I'm very excited. Uh, all glory to God, but I'm more excited that we got a win, and, and we're staying in this tournament competing. And. With your um, question, I think the entire team d did a great job. Everybody was focused on doing what we practiced during the week, just being in the shape, being aggressive, and looking for that counterattack. So we know we have powerful guys in the sides. We got to be aggressive in the middle. And, uh, and the guys with the quality in the mid half, we know they can create chances. And you see the score of Frankie. So, um, I think it's, it's a great, great win for us. We needed it, and now we just have to keep focusing in, in the next game because this doesn't end here. We'll now turn things over to questions. If you could please just announce who you would like to address the question to, that way we could keep things moving. Uh, we'll start things off with Pat Brennan for the Cincinnati Inquirer. Hey guys, uh, this question is for both players. Um, how do you think the red card changed the, uh, the flow of the match? Yeah, obviously it gives an advantage. It's uh, 11 v 10. Uh, there's more space, uh, more time to play. Uh, we try to keep the ball a little bit more because uh, we try to outrun them and, and them get tired. Uh, so we can exploit the, the middle or the wide areas to give more space and, and it helped us a lot because we had a man, a man up. All right, we'll now go to Tom Boger with MLSsoccer.com. Hey guys, uh, congrats on the win. Um, I guess this one's for Kendall. I, I know it's uh, early in uh, this club's MLS history, but is this uh, FC Cincinnati's best win as an MLS team? Well, um, it's part of the, the process, you know. We have been struggling a lot. We have been in difficult moments, so we know that working hard Sooner or later, the wins are going to come. And this is a process that is just starting. So we have to be patient as well. And 
this is part of it. You know, this is our second game with the coaches. We didn't have any uh, friendly games to 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 just know what to do in in this new um, formation. And I think that um, we're just gonna keep on improving day by day, and and hopefully with the games going on, we can we can go in the way we want it. Next is Charlie Hatch with FCCincinnati.com. A question for Kendall. I'm curious just for you, you mentioned the other day that you want to see a response from your teammates, how important this would be to get a result. To see that you guys go up against a tough Atlanta side and pull this out so soon after Yav came in, what does this say about the potential of the roster? Yeah, we just, we have great players in every position. The thing is that we were sometimes like unlucky with the results and and we know the quality that we have. We just have to be focused and believe, especially believe in, in what we are doing. No matter if we are down or up in the game, we have to keep with the same mindset. So this is a great feeling. Winning always brings happiness. So it's better to fix several things winning than losing. Next, we'll go to Jose Rodriguez. Hi guys, uh, my question is for Kendall. Eh, Kendall, quería preguntarte un poquito sobre eh, lo que significaría para este grupo de jugadores avanzar a la siguiente ronda. Con este triunfo de hoy están en posición para hacerlo. Ha mencionado que es un proceso, pero un proceso alimentado de buenos resultados pues crece de buena forma. ¿No qué tan importante sería pasar al siguiente fase? Super importante. Para eso estamos aquí. Eso es lo que queremos hacer. Queremos clasificar. Eh, más allá que estemos lejos de nuestros familiares, sabemos que esto es un tiempo que, que nos, nos, nos da el trabajo y, y tenemos que luchar para, para llegar a la final porque somos ganadores, nunca vamos a un partido pensando en perder. Entonces esta victoria es importante para nuestra confianza también como grupo, para seguir creciendo, para seguir creyendo y obviamente que, que tenemos la chance, el, el siguiente partido, de poder clasificar a la siguiente ronda y sabemos que cualquier cosa puede suceder, más ahora que el calor y muchas cosas están afectando el juego, entonces esos pequeños detalles, si las sabemos manejar, podemos sacarle provecho. Next we'll go to Laurel Thaler, WCPO.com. Um, well, I think I'm pretty much going to ask you to translate that, Kendall, but uh, could you tell just what this means for the confidence level of the group going forward? <laughs> Okay, you want to translate it in English or in French? <laughs> well, I was saying that um, this is huge for us. Like, I'm um, thinking to advance in the next round is important because we, we come with a mindset to qualify. We never go to any game thinking on losing. And that um, winning always bring happiness, you know? Winning bring happiness and and this is the great way to improve things and to um, fix things. It's way better to fix things when you, when you win than when you lose. So um, this is going to help us with our ego as well to keep believing and trusting in the process. Next, we'll go to Charlie Goldsmith for the Inquirer. Frankie, as you continue to grow as a player, what do you see your role uh, with this team right now? Uh, I think my role is very big, uh, defensively, but offensively too. I think today I showed that I could be more of an offensive player, but I could also track back and help the center back and the left back. And and I think I, I play a big role in this team, and, and everybody's in it together, and, and this is why we pulled off the win today. We worked together as a unit, and, and we pulled off the win, and now we look at Red Bulls. Now we'll go to Rob Pierce with Cincinnati Soccer Talk. Frankie, um, can you walk us through your goal uh, from your perspective, uh, how it came about, um, what kind of look did you have, that sort of thing? Sorry, can I, can I can you repeat the question, please? Oh, um, you're the last one, you're the last one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the play started on the left and then I got switched to the right. Audrey checked in the pocket and I saw he was in the pocket, so I. Um, I stood a little bit higher than him and he turned around, gave it to me and I took two touches and I looked up and 
and I shot it and I mean it went in the back of the net. Uh, it was a good it was a good experience getting my first goal but but it was a better experience getting this win and, and looking forward to the next game. We'll go back to Pat Brennan with the Enquirer. Pat, you're up. Uh, guys, what would you like to see from the club uh, in this third match? Obviously, uh, a result would put you in good standing to advance, but there's a bigger picture here, obviously, that Yap and yourselves have talked about in terms of uh, the process. Uh, what would you What would you like to see in the third match? I think the same and more because we cannot be, um, you know, comfort with what we did today. Is yes, it's a good game. Yes, we did a great job. But every time you want to do better, you know, that is the the mindset. And and I know the coaches. We're gonna see the video of this game, in the things that we did good, but also what we can adjust. And uh, the next game is a final for us. We know that we have the, our chance to qualify and we're going to do our best to do it. We'll conclude with a final question from Alonso Contreras. Alonso, go ahead. Hey, guys, congratulations on the win. Thank you. I have Thank two you. questions, one for Kendall and, and one for Frankie. But for Kendall first, how emotionally this win impact uh, the team? A lot because um, whew, it was a long time that we, we, we don't win. So it's a great feeling, you know. Um, so it impact the group in a positive way that we gonna continue with this mentality, continuing what we are believing and knowing that putting the hard work, some, um, sometimes things can't or aren't going in your way, but sooner or later, you're gonna get your results. So. You just keeping that mindset, you know, to be focused, to be patient, and, and believing in what we are doing. And uh, Frankie, what a golazo today. Gracias, gracias. <laughs> ah, golazo, golazo. Do you, <laughs> do you think your, your goal is the best of the tournament so far? What? Do you think that your goal is the best of the tournament so far? Um, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, it's the best. I answer for him, it's the best goal of the tournament. Um, no, I just think, I mean, it was a good goal. It was my first goal, and I thought it was a pretty good goal. Um, but, I mean, it's, it was an important goal for sure. Uh, we got the win, and and it gave us some confidence going forward, and, and now we're looking to the next game, and hopefully more goals come or more assists, but hopefully we get the win the next game too. Answer the question. You believe it's the best goal? You answered it for me or already. <laughs> <laughs> and that will uh, conclude today's press conference. Thank, Thank you. you. Two massive personalities right there for FC Cincinnati, Kendall Waston and the youngster, Frankie Amaya, his first goal. And without question for Kendall, it's the best goal of the tournament, as we just saw in the press conference down in Orlando. So lots of reaction there from Frankie and Kendall, as well as head coach Yop Stam. We'll step aside, take a break, and Kevin and I will have a little more reaction, look ahead to New York, and wrap things up after this break. Stay tuned. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Mercy Health. Healthcare for the universe of you. Next year, we go home. The stadium is new, but it represents something we all know. The heart of Cincy. Builders, grinders, creators, doers. A city fueled by the future. A region united around a game. A place to come together. Cincinnati made this club. You. Your sweat, your heart, your hustle. You brought orange and blue to life. We'll see you there. When it comes to hybrid technology, nobody has more models to choose from than Toyota. From the Prius, the hybrid that started it all, to America's best-selling car, Camry, and best-selling SUV, RAV4, to the first-ever Corolla Hybrid, and the new best-in-class Highlander Hybrid. They all come with a new 10-year, 150,000-mile battery warranty. Now get 0% financing on Prius, Corolla, Avalon, and Camry Hybrids. 
Today, tomorrow, Toyota. McCloskey back with you here in our Cincinnati Bell broadcast booth as we wrap up our post-match reaction from FC Cincinnati's win. 1-0 the final score today against Atlanta United. First time FC Cincinnati wins down in Orlando. First time they defeat Atlanta in what is now four meetings in two seasons and two already here in 2020. It's time for our El Jimador shot of the game. Kevin, there was no debate here. Frankie Amaya gets the honors. No, a great moment again, obviously for the, the club in this tournament as well, but especially for Frankie Amaya. The young talent finally gets off the mark, and it's a fantastic goal to do that. And Adrian Regatin, you saw there, you saw everybody coming over. Everybody's happy for him. Frankie comes with such a great attitude all the time yeah. for the orange and blue. And uh, we, could, we could beat the dead horse and talk about it probably all afternoon if we want. But really, really happy for Frankie Amaya and getting that first professional goal. And as Frankie said, look, it's not about my first goal. It's about our first win down here and knowing that now we have life, that we're playing for something on Wednesday when it's the New York Red Bulls. So Atlanta's a repeat opponent. And guess what, Kevin? Red Bulls, a repeat opponent. We saw them all the way back in March 1st, the opener of this 25th Major League Soccer season. And we saw them the other night against that Atlanta team. They're going to be a very, very tough challenge for the Orange and Blue. I think it's going to be a game really about attitude and mentality, right? If you, if you look at New York and how they play, there's certainly a very defined mentality and an attitude, a little bit of grittiness as well, a bit raw. And I think for FC Cincinnati and Yapstam especially, they're trying to build this winning mentality, right? And, and making sure that you go through games like today today or maybe the performance wasn't so entertaining right. but the result was all accounted and for that that's big to carry over into this game against New York well Florian Velo we thought was very good when we saw him back on March 1st he yep. scored in the opener the game winning goal against Atlanta Atlanta had some chances in that game to get a draw towards the end did not and so now a big match tonight New York mm -hmm. who got a win in their first game against Columbus who beat FC Cincinnati in their first game that's at 10 30 tonight mm -hmm. as Group E will then be done with two matches, and we'll see how things shake up going towards next week. For FC Cincinnati, we told you that match, 8 p.m. on a Wednesday. FC Cincinnati and New York back in action, and the match will be brought to you by Mercy Health, and you can see it live on ESPN. For that one, Kevin and I will be back here right here inside of our Cincinnati Bell broadcast booth doing a pregame show, so we'll get you all set, recap this Atlanta game again, and get you all set for FC Cincinnati and Red Bulls New York. Alex Steck will join us as well with some interviews, of course, with Yop and a player to talk about all of the latest as FC Cincinnati now playing to move on to the knockout stage. Once again, your final score today was 1-0 in favor of the Orange and Blue. Thanks for everybody and our hardworking crew who's helped put this show together and all the support from Orlando. For Kevin McCloskey, I am Tom Glitter. We'll see you next week.